Hello and welcome to the South Ashford Baptist Church uh, Sunday video service for Sunday the 10th of May. My name is Gerard Sigfrid and I'm a lay preacher and the church secretary at South Ashford Baptist Church. Welcome to our service. We start today with a call to prayer from Psalm 22 verses 25 to 31. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly before those who fear you I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him, for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship, all who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. Amen. We're now going to move on to a time of prayer. Lord, we welcome you to our homes to praise and worship you. We come together to welcome you into our hearts and lay our troubles at your feet. We come to give thanks for all we have and all we are. Lord, bring us together as one people, your people. If you are weak, Come to the Lord to gain strength. If you are troubled, come to the Lord to receive heart's ease. If you are low, come to the Lord to be raised up. If you have joy in your heart, let it out. Lord, we pray for all the families and friends of those who have passed on from this terrible virus. We ask for your spirit to go out to the Lord and to bear them up. Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering this affliction, Lord, and pray for your hand of healing upon them. Lord, we pray for all of those who care for others, care for them in our hospitals, care for them in care homes, or care for them in the community. We ask that you protect them, Lord, and that you bless them. We pray for all those in our community elsewhere that help to keep our society running and to get the food in our shops and to keep our streets safe. We thank you for them, Lord, and we ask you to bless them. And we praise you, Lord. We praise you for all of those who have suffered from this awful disease and have recovered. Amen. Our reading today comes from Second uh, Peter. It's Second Peter chapter 3 verses 1 to uh, 29. You have a moment now to pause me while you find your Bibles. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. If I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by
by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Saviour through your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last days scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning, the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being, and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this thing, dear friends. With the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to be to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promises, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking them of, in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned beyond your guard, so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position but grow in the grace and knowledge of our own lord and saviour jesus christ to him be the glory both now and forever amen dear friends writes Peter and dear friends I address you he says I have written to you to stimulate wholesome thinking what is wholesome thinking the, the Greek word is I like Chinese, and it's wholesome thinking in one translation but also means sincere mind so he's writing to stimulate sincerity, sincere mind. This is written long before there were any um, second-hand car dealers. Uh, but there must have been a few dodgy dealers around even in Peter's time. Sincere comes from the Latin sine cara, which means without wax. Now, at that time, if you were a, a salesman of um, uh, factory seconds, we would call them now, slightly cracked pots, you would rub wax to cover the cracks and imperfections in the glaze. And the only way 
to see that would be to hold the pot up to the sun and look through the sides of the pot uh, or whatever vessel it was uh, at the sun when you could see the cracks and that Greek word Eilikaines, Krides, literally means sun judged. So he's asking for sun judged minds. Minds that have been held up to inspection because God wants sun judged minds. He wants no mind with the sin covered up. Now, at this time of isolation, there are blessings to be found. Blessings in isolation. We are, if you like, a bunch of little hermits, all out in the wilderness, with time away from the world for introspection, looking for those patches of sin, time for prayer, more time to read our Bibles, more time to reflect. So let's take some of that time and use it for our purposes so that when uh, I see you coming back into church, which I look forward to greatly, we can all be busy polishing our tonsures. Um, I've had mine for a few years now. Peter is writing uh, to, re to um, call for his readers his listeners to recall the words of the prophets and the commands of our Lord. He's not saying you've forgotten them, not at all. He's saying recall and keep in mind all you have learnt. It's very easy in our world to get overwhelmed by mundane things, the things of the world. Well, we all have to live in the world unless you have a rocket ship in your back garden but we don't have to be of the world and we are called to give what is God's back to God are we not he talks about the last days he talks about the scoffers even in his time there were these scoffers these are the sort of people that say I don't need God well no, God doesn't need you. He doesn't need any of us. God is God. We all need God. And isn't it unsurprising then that as people reach the end of their lives, the most hardened atheists think again. They want a church funeral. They want the minister to say words to them. They want to pray. People say, if there was a God, such and such would never have happened. He wouldn't have allowed it. We've discussed this before. If you build your house on the side of a volcano, that's your fault. Human beings make machines. Human beings are not perfect airplanes fall from the sky but God didn't do it people made those machines and people flew those machines and people made mistakes I hear people say there is no God and then they cling to things like healing stones what healing can a stone do for you candles sense to make you feel better well it might make you smell better but it doesn't make you feel better I recall um, a moment when I was having a, a breakfast in a cafe uh, last year and a father was telling his uh, son who would have been about four or five I suppose there is no God and um, of course I demurred and I told him that he'd look pretty silly on the judgment day. The scoffers in Peter's time were asking where is this 
coming. They're saying everything carries on like it always has. There is no change. Not since the creation, they say. Wasn't that a change? Peter points out in the letter that God has already made changes. God is constantly making changes. He refers to the creation. The greatest change there possibly could be. Something was made from nothing, which eventually led to all of us. He talks about the flood, which wiped away most of the ungodly. And then he goes on, Peter goes on, to talk about the end times. He reminds us that God the Creator is also God the Judge. And he refers to the world. And Peter is using the, uh, the Greek word cosmos, which refers to all the people. It means the whole population. So all of the people on the of the world. God has intervened before, and he will intervene again. He tells us that for the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. Time does not mean the same thing for God as it does to us. With our very limited time upon the earth, our three score years and ten. God is not trapped in time as we are. Time does not have the same meaning for God. God is eternal. God created the world. It doesn't anywhere tell us how long he was waiting to create the there are over 4,000 years of um, recorded history in the Old Testament and since the time of Jesus another 2,000 years has passed but that's nothing to God. Here's a little story for you. Little Johnny said to God, is it true that for you a second is like a thousand years? A thousand years is like a second. And God said to Johnny, Yes, that's right. For me, a thousand years is like a second. Ah, oh, said little Johnny. And, and is it true that for you, God, a million pounds is like a penny? And God says to Johnny, Well, yes, that's true too. For, for me, a million pounds is like a penny. Ah, oh, says Johnny. Can I have a million pounds? Yes, says God. Uh, just hang on a second. Time for God is not the same as time for us. And in verse 9 it tells us, The Lord is patient. He is gathering in the faithful. As long as there are faithful to be gathered. The day of judgment is coming. We don't know when it is. Jesus told us that himself. Peter reminds us that the day of the Lord will come as a thief. That means he doesn't make appointments. You know, the burglar doesn't tell you when he's going to come to rob your house. The pickpocket uh, does not make an appointment uh, in the high street, please. Uh, five o'clock this afternoon, please bring your wallet. It's going to be a surprise. The earth will be laid bare, meaning it will be exposed. Everything will be exposed for what it is, for judgment. And the ungodly will be thrown to the fire. So we need to live godly lives all the time. Another analogy for you. We've got to be ready. Got to be ready all the time. Like pilots 
waiting to scramble. Think of those scenes from the Second World War where the, the fighter pilots are sitting around in armchairs and their bellies rung and off they run to their aircraft. Or uh, if you want a little bit more modern example, what about the V-bomber crews that were on standby? They didn't know when they were going to be needed, but they had to be ready all the time. And we're reminded that the Lord's patience means salvation. Are you ready? I ask myself, am I ready? Am I ready to meet my Saviour? I hope I am. No, I'm not asking all of you to hurry towards him in the physical sense, but you have to be ready for him. You have to be ready for judgment. You have to be in a state of grace. Peter reminds us that some scripture is hard to understand. And that's true. When I prepare my sermon, I, I have my, my books to refer to. And I lean on the experience of uh, scholars. If you haven't got those sort of materials, discuss it with others. Discuss it with other Christians. Because, as Peter says, be on your guard. Be ready. Be ready for the last day. And remember what you're striving for. As it says in verse 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and for ever. Amen. And we will finish our time together today with a blessing. And I do urge you, if you haven't done so already, to go and look at the worship conducted say conducted, I don't mean with a baton, conducted by Daniel and the uh, children's address uh, given by Caroline. So we come to the blessing and it's taken from John, uh, I beg your pardon, from Jude, uh, to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God our Saviour be glory majesty power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore Amen